Hi everyone, Jack still here. Welcome back to our course. Before we start, let's talk about the challenge from the last lesson. The challenge in the previous lesson was move the serial.print line hello world to the loop function. Compile and upload the code to see the effect and try to explain the effect of the code. Open hello world program and move serial.print line hello world to loop function. Upload the code to see the effect. After uploading, click the icon like a magnifying glass in the upper right corner to open the serial monitor. You can see Hello World on the serial monitor and keeps increasing. This is because in Arduino, the code in the setup function will be executed only once, and the code in the loop function will be executed repeatedly, so the serial.print line Hello World will be executed over and over again. Now let's start this lesson. In this lesson, I will use an example program to guide you to further study the setup and loop functions and get familiar with the program structure of the Arduino program. Open the example program, blink. Click File, Examples, Basics, blink. Now let's preview the whole program. You can see that there are long comments at the front and the code are at the back. One thing to note, when we open a program, we should not rush to the code. It is better to look at the comment of the program first. In the comments, there is a lot of helpful information. In the last lesson, we learned about comments that begin with two consecutive slashes. And the Arduino ID grays out comments. In this program, we will see another way to comment. It starts with the a slash and an asterisk, and ends with an asterisk and a slash and we call it a block comment or a multi-line comment. This type of comment can extend over more than one line. Once the compiler reads the a slash and asterisk, it ignores whatever follows until it encounters a an asterisk and slash. Let's take a look at the comments. The first line describes the name of the program, blink, and the next line turns an LED on for one second, then off for one second, repeatedly. This sentence describes the program's effect. Further down, we can see some more detailed explanations. Finally, the program's editing time, author, and copyright information. After reading the comments, we have a basic understanding of the program. Now, upload this program to your Wuno board and see the effect. You can see that on the Wuno board, there is a small onboard LED, which is repeatedly turning on and off showing a flashing effect. Let's go back to the code. I will explain to you what each piece of code roughly means in this program and how the onboard LED flashes through the code. As we learned in the last lesson, an Arduino program has two necessary parts. One is the setup function and the other is the loop function. The code in the setup function will only be executed once and the code in the loop function will be executed repeatedly. And in this lesson, we will learn how the setup and loop functions are used in practice. Let's say you're running a burger restaurant. If you use the Arduino program to operate, cleaning the restaurants, preparing ingredients, and opening the door every day, these preparations only need to be done once a day, should be placed in the setup function, receiving customers, ordering, cooking, and delivering food which need to be done once for each customer and need to be repeated all the time, should be placed in the loop function. Back to the Blink program. First, the setup function will be executed, and there is only one line of code in it. Pin mode, LED built-in, output. Look at the comment, initialize digital pin LED built-in as an output. You might confuse, what is a digital pin? What is LED built-in? And what is an output? In order to answer these questions, you need to learn more about the Wuno board in your hand. Let's start by learning what is digital pin. As we have learned before, on the Wuno board there is a chip, at Mega 3 to 8, which is the brain of the Ano board. Don't worry about that fancy name. When I say chip, integrated circuit, or microcontroller, I'm talking about it. Just remember that everything on the Arduino board is there to support it. If you look closely at the microcontroller, there will be little metal prongs that stick out of the side. These are called pins. 
These pins are used to interface with other hardware and circuits such as LEDs, sensors, and even your computer. And these plastic holes on the edge of the board are called pin headers. You can also call them pins, since they are connected to the pins of the chip through the circuit on the board. These holes, or pin headers, allow you to connect various hardware to the WUNO board. Look at the text on the board. The pins are divided into three groups, digital, analog, and power. Each group of pins has different characteristics, but that's not the point here. What I want you to know now is that digital pin is a type of pin, and there is a number or name next to each pin. Later in programming, if we want to program pins, we use their names or numbers. In this lesson, we use LED, which is connected to pin 13 when the WUNO board is designed. And as you can see, this pin is a digital pin. Back to the program, we have learned what is digital pin. Let's learn what is LED built-in. It is actually mentioned in the comments above the code. Most Arduinos have an onboard LED you can control. On the WUNO, MEGA, and ZERO, it is attached to digital pin 13. On MKR1000 on pin 6. It is also mentioned in the comments. LED built-in is set to the correct LED pin independent of which board is used. This means when we use LED built-in in Arduino IDE, Arduino IDE will automatically convert it to the right pin. You can think of LED built-in as an alias for the pin of the LED on the Arduino board. For example, you are using the WUNO board and LED built-in will be set to 13. So, what is output? You can simply understand that this pin can be divided into two modes. One is input, which can be used as an input to do something, such as reading voltage. The other is output, which is used as an output, such as applying voltage. This program is to control LEDs, so it will be set to output mode. We will discuss this in more depth later in the courses. Maybe you still don't understand something, it doesn't matter. Just remember that this code is used to initialize the onboard LEDs, and it only needs to be run once. After the setup function, the loop function will be executed. There are four code statements in this function, and the code will be executed in order from top to bottom. The first one, digital right, LED built-in, high, turn the LED on, high is the voltage level. The second, delay 1000, it means wait for a second. The third, digital right, LED built-in, low, it means turn the LED off by making the voltage low. And last, delay 1000, wait for a second. You can see that the code has roughly the same form, a word or phrase, a pair of parentheses, another word inside and finally a semicolon that symbolizes the end of the statement. This is the terminology, function call, and function calls can perform specific efforts. For example, delay 1000, what this function does is pause the program for one second. Next, digital right, LED built-in, high, digital right, LED built-in, low. These two codes are roughly the same. Only the last high and low is different. How to understand it? LED is light emitting diode. It has a characteristic. It will only light up when the voltage reaches a threshold value. When the output is set to high, the WUNO board will apply 5 volt at the specified pin, and the LED will light up. When the output is set to low, the LED will not light up with insufficient voltage. Remember, high, the LED on. Low, the LED off. So, the light is on. Wait for a second. The light is off. Wait a second. Then go back to the top of the loop function. The light comes on. Wait one second. The light goes off. Wait one second. And so on. Creating the effect of LED blinking one by one. In this program, we see that the code in the setup function is to initialize the pins, and the code in loop function is to control the pins. This is how the setup and loop functions work in practice. Next, let's get to know the functions. We previously said that setup and loop are functions. And in this lesson, we'll call pen mode, digital write, 
Delay. Are functions. What exactly do functions look like? We already know a lot about setup and loop, so let's put it aside for now and just understand it as a special kind of function. Functions can be thought of as a packaged piece of code that does something specific. When we use a function, we just need to give it some information. For example, for the pin mode function, we need to tell it which pin to set and what mode to set the pin to. The Arduino provides us with many functions that can be very helpful. Next, we'll learn how to use the functions, the function call we mentioned before. First, there is the function name pin mode. The function name is the credential to call the function. This name must be exactly correct and exist. That is, Arduino has provided this function. What functions does Arduino provide and how to use them? We'll learn about that in the later lesson. The function names are followed by a pair of parentheses. Remember that it is a pair of parentheses, and each left parenthesis must be closed by a right parenthesis. Inside the parentheses is the information we need to provide to the function, which we call parameters, which may or may not be present or may have one or even more. In the pin mode function, two parameters are required. The first is the pin number and then the pin mode. The parameters are separated from each other by a comma. Finally, there is a semicolon to symbolize the end of the statement. When run to the pin mode function, the pin mode function will set the specified pin to the specified mode according to the given parameters. Next, let's do a little exercise. Modify the delay function and change the duration of the light to be 3 seconds. A small tip. The parameter of the delay function is the number of milliseconds to pause. 1000 milliseconds is 1 second. Pause the video and think about how to modify it. 3, 2, 1. Announcing the answer. We just need to modify the parameter in the first delay function to 3000. A pause of 3000 milliseconds is a pause of 3 seconds. LED turned on. Pause for 3 seconds. Turned off. After closing for one second, the LED rail it. Let's go over what we've learned in this lesson. We got familiar with the Arduino program through the Blink example. Setup and loop functions are the basic structure of the Arduino program. Code in the setup function is executed only once, and code in the loop function is executed over and over again. Then we learn it about pens, which are used to connect to other hardware and circuits. Finally, we learn it what a function is and how to use it. A function is a piece of code that is packaged to perform a specific effects. Calling a function requires a function name, a pair of parentheses, parameters, and finally a semicolon ending. That's it for this lesson. Don't forget to complete the afterclass challenge. Based on the Blink sample code, modify the parameters in the delay function according to your ideas, and change the duration of the onboard to LED on and off. See you in the next lesson.